Uh, my name is Dan. I'm a 2,4-D atrazine victim. And uh, we have to hold off on having children this year because of that. Because we choose not to pass it on to our children. And it doesn't leave your body in a few days. Uh, basically, I'll save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Get the drift catchers out. Get the posses out in the water. When Seneca Jones comes, when Warehouser comes, and Roseburg comes, and all the other guys come, test. Test the air. It's in the air. We, we spiked. I saw the helicopter with my binoculars. That's how far away it was over Triangle Lake. And my levels spiked. It's in the air. It's not in food. It's not in the land. It's not in, the, it's not in your 200 foot well. It's in the air. So, because, like you said, because of the bureaucracy, we are taking our own funds, and we are getting the drift catchers, and we are getting the posses, and we are putting them in the water, in the air, below their clear cuts, and we are going to bring that data forward. So my question to you is, are you interested in our data? We are actually have people certified, have taken training, their time, their money, because we need to move. No more. No more people are going to get poisoned. We're not, we're not waiting. This is not going to go on for years. I'm sorry I'm going to keep looking at you, Elizabeth, because okay. I'm not picking on you. But we're not going to wait any more years, anybody. We're not waiting anymore. That's right. Okay? And we're testing for more than atrazine 2,4-D. Right now we're touching, uh, testing for Tordon RTU. Somebody knows about that in this room. Um, Basically, we're going to be testing ourselves, doing those things legitimately. We're using legitimate people. We're going to doctors. We're testing our urine. We're going to test, and we're going to test, and we're going to test. We're going to keep on putting this information on your desk, and we're going to keep on putting on your information on your desk because we're, there's children, children this tall, this tall, that have this stuff in their bodies. This school has a mazapir in it in their well system, in their water. Test the, the water here. What was that? The kids are drinking. Test the water here. Nobody's concerned about it. I, I don't have kids here, so I'm, I'm, I'm whatever. It's, it's weed killer, people. It's weed killer. It's, it's a, in a side. It's in a killer. It's in the water. It's in the air. So basically, um, my question is, are you guys interested? Because we're using our time and our money. Are you interested in our information? If we present it to you, are you interested maybe if we take two posses below Seneca Jones's cut and we give one to you and we take one to our lab and we compare notes and we take our drip catcher and your drip catcher or, or, or we take two drip, drip catchers and you take one for your lab or maybe you give us one of your people and, and be with us during that spray and we get the cooperation of Roseburg, Seneca Jones. We get the cooperation because I... If they don't believe, I mean, they're, they're good guys, they're, they're, but they, have, they, don't, they believe in their science. So get them to participate, too, because they say it doesn't drift, so it doesn't drift. So what, what's the fear? Let's test. <laughs> yeah, I would say pay for it, but, but basically, I, I'm done with people paying for it because you guys are too slow. So we're going to pay for it ourselves. But are you interested? That's my question. Are you interested in our information? Are you interested in working with us to move this thing forward? Not ears, not decades. Um, I'm going to answer it, and then I'm going to invite my colleagues to answer as well, if you like. So I would say, yes, we are very interested in working with you. We're very interested in what you're doing. We're interested in, in, your, in your data. The ability to use the data is, um, is dependent on how, uh, how able we are to evaluate the quality of the data. This is this is true. It's going to be true of our data as well as any data that anybody else produces. So, um, being able to um, see or see documentation or know or participate is it will be a, a major feature. Now, we don't have any plans at this point to to join anybody out here to to participate in a sampling event. Um, but you know, I would say that we're very open to conversations about that. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I, I guess I, I don't know, I feel badly that you're in a position where you're wanting or feeling like you need to spend your own resources for it. I know, um, we know, we've been talking about scarce resources. We know everybody's got scarce resources. So 
Um, you know, I wish we had a, a big pot of money that we could reach into and just kind of do the whole thing, do it quickly, uh, you know, as quickly as possible. So, uh, you know, wherever the data come from, again, wherever the data come from, our ability to use it will be entirely dependent on how much we can rely on but you're interested. in the data. Yes, we are. And I will just, I will just, you know, invite any colleagues to. I have nothing to add. I, I'm a, I'm a nerd. Well, yeah, we're all like data geeks. Yeah. I, I want to see it. But I congratulate you about the urine because that's very important, the urine testing that you're doing. It's more important than food and land, yeah. but the urine is important. I just want to clarify one thing, though. Um, we're testing for 2,4-D in urine because we have the methodology to test only for 2,4-D in urine and atrazine in urine. In the other... Ma uh, the, what is it? Metabolites. metabolites? The metabolites, that's right. The, the, the pesticides and their metabolites. Um, in the other media, in drinking water um, and food, we have the ability to test for a broader spectrum of pesticides, and we'll t be testing for as broad a spectrum as we can, given the methodologies that are available. Mm -hmm. So it won't be limited to 2,4-D and atrazine and the other media. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Good evening. I'm Lisa Arkin, Director of Oregon Toxics Alliance, and we're an environmental justice and environmental health organization working statewide. And we've worked on this issue a very long time. Worked with people in Highway 36 areas, as well as agencies, and we're on a number of regional coalitions working with EPA Region 10 on the issue of environmental justice, and that is the crux of my question. Agencies and um, projects and agencies that take federal money must be uh, cognizant of and obligated to the concept of environmental justice. And that means that those who are impacted and vulnerable have representation in decision making. So my question is about the model, your protocol, and you've heard very eloquent testimony and comments from the people here. Not only do they live in this area and have decades of experience with this issue, they have a lot of knowledge and much to contribute. And I'm not talking about data necessarily. So my question is, we need, I'm asking if you will include representatives of impacted and vulnerable communities in the decision making and monitoring process. It's very important. Uh, certain things that you may not, not you personally, but those that are participating, you have a wealth of expertise there with this group, knowledge and experience, but you don't have the personal commitment to this living in forest land and what that's like, nor the viewpoint of a, like a statewide organization that has worked with many different communities in and outside of Oregon on these issues. <coughs> so there should be inclusion of impacted vulnerable community members and organizations in your process. Mm -hmm. I think that's important and probably mandated as well. Mm -hmm. um, alternative dispute resolution is something else where you're getting opposing parties to the table. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about environmental justice and representation. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can answer that question. Can I respond? Um, thank you for yeah, raising that. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important topic and something that um, I can tell you unequivocally that we are deeply committed to. Um, I am personally deeply committed to and something we spend a lot of time in our, uh, in our program, in my section, in our office talking about. Um, thinking about trying to figure out what are the best ways to um, ensure that we're um, addressing, and, uh, addressing our most vulnerable citizens and involving folks to the best of our ability. So um, I will say that this meeting was um, an, a first step, right? and at least you know getting eyeball to eyeball with you, letting you see us, you know, letting us meet you. Um, but that's it's by no means the only or the even the best way to do exactly what you're suggesting. So um, I, I don't have a ready-made method for this effort for how to do that, but I think it's an excellent suggestion and. You know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to quick think on my feet for how, how might we do that, but I think it's a great idea and something that we will um, figure out how to make happen here. So, you know, maybe that's something if you've got suggestions or on an index card, if you've got an idea, if you're interested in, you know, some ongoing conversations or, you know, 
the, the, as I said when I started, you know, some of this stuff, we think we have a pretty good idea of we're going to do it, but it's no, by no means cast in granite. Um, you know, if there are pieces of the design that we could improve or that really just don't meet the needs of uh, people uh, feeling confident about the results, whatever they are, um, then I think we need to broaden out the conversation. So, yeah. Yeah. I've attended many, many park board meetings and I can say they're very insular. And the people who are being discussed are not at the table and that should change. Thank you. Thank you.